We're recording this video Wednesday, 7th of March 2012. Hope you had a good day's training today. Uh, it's just coming up to 1.37 p.m. Chicago time. Well, interesting couple of days. I uh, must admit, yesterday, Tuesday's sell-off caught me by a little bit by surprise. I thought we'd kind of test down the Monday lows, but I didn't expect kind of a gap down in the magnitude of the sell-off that we did have. Uh, I suppose just <clears throat> in this last uh, while, three months or so, been used to this kind of really tight uh, up range, and so seeing gaps of that magnitude and, and ranges of that magnitude was just, well, just not used to it, so not seen it in a while. What it does mean for me, though, is we're in this kind of topping out pattern, and so we're going to see kind of bigger ranges and bigger swings like that, so kind of get used to it. Um, if I looked at the uh, better sine wave on these kind of uh, time frame charts, going back down again to the 45 minute chart, the left shoulder being formed on the lowest time frame, pull back to end of trend, that's what we had up in the 70s by the center trend. Now we've dropped off into this kind of downtrend move, uh, so we've got to see pull back to end of trend. So I think, you know, although we've kind of bounced quite, quite nicely today, uh, we've still got to test this down a little bit with a pull back to end of trend on the 45 minute chart. But uh, go up one time frame to the 135 minute chart, and we found support. Uh, with the activity yesterday and this morning. So we're in a pullback to end of trend on this time frame. So if you like, we're just going to test down on that 45 minute chart uh, somewhere back into this kind of region between 30 and 50, uh, 40 and 50. And then we'll head back up to form pullback to end of trend. So the left shoulder was marked with an end of trend on the 45 minute chart. Hopefully pullback to end of trend will be the head uh, of this move on um, uh, the 135 minute chart. And on daily chart, that then becomes pullback to end of trend that we'll be be making to finally kind of top this pattern out, you know, if everything kind of plays uh, to plan. So that's what I'm looking for. And all that means is uh, that the, you know, the swings and the confusion in the market, you know, which way we're going will will intensify. People will be saying, well, we're still in an uptrend. People are saying, no, we're, you know, it's a downtrend and this is just a retracement and so on. So I just see that a, as a kind of a, a noisy pattern in terms of trying to find that top and then finally kind of coming down. Was uh, if we look on um, the Trin systems, you know, on uh, the Monday, uh, we signaled to go short and take profits on the Trin systems. Usually, the Trin systems are a little bit early, uh, and it has they have been early on uh, kind of retracement moves in this uptrend. So, uh, but they you know cashed out of these kind of signals that we had over the last few days, and we're now into a, a downswing on the Trin system. So, I'm just expecting this kind of volatility here. Again, on the t t uh, Trin systems, if you look at the uh, strategy performance report, doing quite nicely. We're uh, kind of almost up to making you know, breakthrough record highs on this. And on better X trend, it has kind of signaled into a, um, a downtrend on the daily charts on things like the uh, Dow, NASDAQ, and so on. But I like this particular chart. This is the at ES chart, continuous daily uh, data, 24 hours for the E-mini. And you know, so with the Tuesday's activity, this was the sell-off into support region here. So we're kind of bouncing off there. So I'm kind of waiting for this uh, particular chart to kind of roll over to really be kind of convinced uh, that we're uh, breaking into a strong downtrend on these daily charts. Anyway, so that's what I'm looking at there. Uh, today's uh, trading, uh, really quite nice on the 1500 tip bar chart. Beginning of the day, we had an exhaustion selling signal, bullish divergence kind of comes in, and that's the signal for the beginning of this rally. But it was pretty noisy uh, in here to kind of get going. I'm just going to talk about that. There was a question I got in from uh, Tim about this kind of noise, so I just want to refer back to this chart. So we broke up initially up to the 47 type level, had exhaustion buying, and that was almost like a kind of like a short covering rally, a lot of people kind of getting on board here. And then we kind of lost our way for a little bit, uh, tested down into Rambo patterns here. Another bullish divergence pattern comes in after exhaustion selling on the downside. And then look at this, I, I'm calling this pattern the gathering. So it's a whole bunch of blue professional bars kind of coming in and they're just acquiring, acquiring in this little zone versus just kind of stealthy activity. Support kind of comes in and bang, we're away into this uptrend, which finishes nicely uh, with exhaustion buying, pullback to end of trend, Rambo patterns up here. A little bit of testing up. I think at the, you know it's 1.40 p.m. Chicago time. We're not going to have a change in trend because today's trend was up, uh, but we're just finding a topping out pattern kind of here. I took a, uh, a long trade kind of at the beginning of the day because it was actually on the 500 tip bar chart. It was a little pullback to end of trend signal here. 
which was coinciding with cyclical support, which was pullback and an uptrend on the 4500 tip bar chart. So I was getting long right at the beginning uh, of the day. Had to sit through this chop and actually uh, bailed out with a quarter point loss and then re-entered uh, when I saw this activity at 46 and a quarter uh, to catch this trend. So that's kind of nice. I didn't get the full, uh, you know, we were up to 52. I think the move was, was good for about six, six and a half points, something like that. I bailed after... Uh, what well, to get three and a quarter on that, but I was I was up three for the day after two trades, so I was quite happy with that. And I'd had a pro signal exit, and it looked to me as if it was just running out of steam. Of course, it didn't. It kept on playing up. But I'll at attach that to the end of this video. But just uh, a couple of good questions today, so I just want to refer to those. First one from Brad. Uh, Barry, thank you again for your work developing the indicators, regular postings that you share. They've helped me improve my trading and confidence immensely. So that's nice from Brad. Since I've transitioned away from MACD stochastics to your sine wave, it's finally clipped with me, especially with comparing in multiple time frames. I do use all the indicators. What Now, here's the question. What is the reason you've chosen to follow the time frames multiples of three? Because people, you know, I, I'm, everybody knows I'm using uh, the 500, 1500, 4500 tip bar charts and then uh, a whole bunch of, you know, kind of uh, daily, weekly, monthly charts and so on. They're roughly multiple of three versus multiples of two, four and five. So, Brad. The reason I use uh, multiples of three on my chart, you know, years ago when I was looking at multiple time frames, Dr. Elders was kind of the guy that was uh, using multiple time frames and he was using a ratio of five and particularly on, you know, kind of swing trading or kind of longer term time uh, time frames uh, for commodity trading. So he was using daily, monthly, weekly and the, the ratio was kind of about five. So I initially started, you know, playing around with five, but what I found was, you know, the e-mini market moves really quickly. And so if you're using uh, five as your multiple between uh, time frames, between your lowest and highest time frame, you've got a ratio of 25 by multiplying first by five and then five again. Uh, that ends up being 25. And what I found was that was just too big a distance between, you know, the lowest, uh, the medium and the highest time frame. Whereas using a ratio of three gave you one times, th uh, times three times three gave you nine and it was a ratio of nine between the lowest and the highest time frame. Uh, because of the faster moving markets kind of just fitted better so it's kind of a, it was a look and feel type thing and over over the years and months kind of playing around with different uh, multiples I settled on three and really liked it and kind of never looked back and never kind of questioned it so uh, it would be nicer on the daily uh, monthly weekly charts if it were possible to do kind of you know daily three day and then kind of week and a half type charts I prefer that but you know the data just doesn't uh, drop out that easily out of uh, kind of data feeds and charting patterns so you know I kind of stick with uh, daily weekly and monthly and kind of you know that's kind of good enough if, if you like from that perspective but ideally I'd like something a little bit faster so it's just on the uh, multiple of three <coughs> And then from Tim. Tim, uh, Barry, Barry, I've got a big problem sitting through ups and downs to get four points. Do you have any advice for scalping timeframes, targets, etc.? So, and today was kind of a classic, Tim, in terms of you know uh, having to sit through some chop to get the four points. Going back to this 1500 tip bar chart, so this is a, a signal I really like as a kind of change in trend signal. So the first bullish or bearish divergence signal after exhaustion, buying, uh, selling, or buying here. And around, uh, they either happen after, you know, at this point here on kind of left shoulder, you know, waiting for pullback to end of trend, or happening around here, almost like a double bottom at a support area here. So I was looking for a change in trend after this. I was in a little bit early on this because I'd taken the uh, pullback to end of trend signal on the 500 tip bar chart. But having it gone in my direction nicely by, you know, a couple of points here, then had to sit around this chop and it came back and tested uh, my uh, entry point twice before I kind of jumped out and then re-entered uh, at 46 here, having lost a little bit, you know, it would have been a good good trade having uh, not jumped out here and kind of, because um, my stop was miles away from here at uh, uh, 41.25 and it got nowhere clear, uh, close to that, but, you know, mentally this chop kind of uh, was difficult to take. And at this point here where it was testing uh, kind of the lows, I jumped out and thought, well, let's just sit back and watch this rather than uh, kind of uh, hold to the bitter end. My suggestions are this, so they're twofold. The first one is, you know, uh, when you go into a trade, I'm using a four-point stop on my trade. And I, as soon as a trade is entered, I mentally uh, anticipate taking a loss. So I say, 
I'm taking a little bit of a gamble here. I think there's been either a change in trend or I think this is a good entry point. Uh, I could be early. I'm going to have to sit around a little bit of chop and I'm willing to take a full point loss to give it a go, to trade the probabilities that this will end up going four points in my favor. So um, I always trade you know, a suitable number of contracts that I'm, I can mentally take uh, a four point loss on those contracts. So that's the first thing. So just mentally saying, I'm rolling the dice, uh, I could be wrong on this, and if I'm wrong, I'm willing to take that loss. But, you know, there's also the, the chance that I'm right, uh, it'll go in my favor and I'll get the four points in my favor. So that's the first thing. The second suggestion is that as the trade kind of develops, as you see in this kind of 1500 tip bar chart example, um, I'm starting to question, because we couldn't push through here and we had these two exhaustion buying signals that kind of ran out of steam, we went, went the other way. I started to think that maybe when we were retesting kind of these highs with these amateur bars that I'd got the direction wrong and that we were going to break into a downtrend. So I start thinking at what level, if the market breaks down to a particular level, at what level am I wrong uh, in anticipating this potential trade. And I figured that I actually in this case moved my stop up to 45. Um, once it had got into uh, my favor and it was coming back down again, we'd seen this activity had gone this way. And I said to myself, look, if it comes back down to 45 again, having gone through all these amateur up bars here, I've just got this wrong. So at 45, I'm going to get out. So um, I'd actually just moved my stop back up to 45 so that it automatically took me out. It took a quarter point loss, but it took me out at a level at which I had said to myself, actually, I think I've got you know this trend direction incorrect. And if the price proves me wrong at that point, I want to be out and then looking for kind of confirmation uh, of a re-entry and a change of direction or whatever it might be. So it took me out at 45 um, because that was where I, I figured, I think I've actually got this wrong. I need to sit and watch this for a while. And then as soon as the professionals came back in, we hadn't had a professional bar for a long time on the 1500 tip bar chart. And this was actually, you know, a good 45 minutes or something like that sitting through this chop. Then we got these blue professional bars and I call this kind of the gathering. A whole bunch of them kind of coming in, just accumulating that zone breakout. They never let it break below support. They hardly let it, you know, don't need, they didn't even break any of the lows of those secondary kind of um, professional bars here and then the market kind of took off. So, you know, I entered on a little bit of a, you know, um, a buyout, you know, a buyout level at 46 and a quarter. It wasn't a great entry. It wasn't like on a really nice little pullback, but there wasn't anything there. So, and all the blue professional bars were there. And again, I was saying to myself, look, this I think is going to acquisition after we'd had another uh, bullish divergence pattern here, acquisition in the zone, we're going to take off to the upside. Um, so, need to re-enter in the same direction as I got in initially, having been shaken out of my trade, uh, but it worked out for the good. So that's my two suggestions. The first one is just think about your loss as almost in the bag. You know, okay, I'm taking a bit of a gamble. I'm, I'm happy to take a four-point loss. So trade the number of co contracts that are appropriate that taking a four-point loss is, you know, mentally something you can deal with. And then secondly, figure the level at which the, the market, if the market trades to that price, that your analysis is actually incorrect uh, and that you're willing to get out and just reevaluate the market. So there we go. Hopefully that helps. Uh, and uh, I hope you had a good day's trading. Going to tag on um, this second trade uh, from today. Hopefully the video isn't too long. And I might talk about yesterday's activity in, in another video, uh, possibly tomorrow. So because uh, uh, trend down days uh, and trend days are tricky to trade after we've had all of the activity kind of pre-opened. So actually trading uh, yesterday was a really choppy day, but how to approach that I think is kind of worth worth a video. So I'll uh, maybe do that for tomorrow. Hope you had a good day's trading. Just on 46.25, let's try this again. And um, not a particularly good entry, uh, but just kind of waiting for a little bit more kind of confirmation. So 1500 tip bar chart, we came back into exhaustion selling and Rambo patterns down here. It's down at the breakdown, uh, the pullback level on 4500 tip bar chart, so it's almost like a double bottom kind of here. It was a, f a uh, flush uh, pattern on the 500 tip bar chart, we've, so we've had exhaustion, bullish uh, divergence, and then flush patterns here. And then Rambo's kind of at the low. 
and we haven't seen that exhaustion buying on the upside to signal the end of this. So, um, let's keep going. I mean, we haven't seen blue professional bars on 1500 until the, the highs up here. It's just because of these blue professional bars came in, came in on the 500 tip bar chart, the kind of buying, you know, uh, this kind of breakout, that little kind of consolidation zone. So, let's see, long 46.25. Okay, here we go. Whole little family of blue professional bars just coming on the 500 tip bar chart. Okay, and 15. There we go. So uh, on this little retrace, this is the amateurs. So the, the last amateur uh, professional signal we got on uh, 1500 was just kind of uh, selling those highs up 47, and we just kind of had a little bit of a retrace kind of down here. Whole family kind of came in the last place that we kind of had an acquisition zone here between uh, 45, 46. Um, ends up being bullish divergence as well on 1500 tip bar chart. We're breaking the highs, so uh, I think we're going to now got enough uh, kind of professional support to take this through 47. So fingers crossed. Well, we've had a whole heap now of uh, blue professional bars come on the 1500 tip bar chart. One on 45, breaking up to 47s. We needed that to happen because if the lows start getting broken, if we go through 45, that was all an opportunity for the professionals to get short. This is, yeah. Let's see. This is. Uh, we need to see it keep going through 47. So Rambo here just came back into 46s. I need to get through this resistance level break into an uptrend for that to be good confirmation. And. Uh, if this comes in at cyclical resistance and we start breaking down through 45, then then this end of trend is good and we'll, we'll go the other way. So we need we need to get through 47s. So let's see. Okay, finally decent breakthrough 47s. Um, we kind of test the bound a little amateur down bar 46 held. And now we're going. So we got support in on 4500 tip bar chart. All these blue professional bars breaking the highs of that kind of comfortably breaking the highs now so finally I think we're in an uptrend above resistance on the 500 tip bar chart and uh, so looking for pullback to end of trend on here exhaustion uh, buying uh, targets at 50 and a quarter so yeah could get there let's see hey broken up to 48 and a half now which is good we've got 14,000 on better momentum it's a big reading but uh, we'll have exhaustion buying at some point. No blue professional bars up here. It's Rambo patterns at the moment. There's that exhaustion so, uh, buying signal on 500. So mirroring this one. So this thing wasn't going to be over until we see something like that on the upside. But well, we've got to make pullback to end of trend on the 500. I'm just hoping that uh, uh, you know between now and 50 we can just uh, keep it a solid move without much retrace. So, but this is big uh, in terms of reading. So we might have just a little bit of. Uh, Softening kind of come in, professionals kind of pick it up. So let's see, still holding. I'm at 49.50. Ah, and the reason just coming out a little bit uh, early is um, we have pro signal lights on the 1500 tip bar chart. We've had a Rambo pattern up here, bearish divergence just kind of came in, and that was just a push up to 50. That was pretty extreme. I suppose a round number as well. Kind of a little bit nervous about that. So for uh, three and a quarter, which is fine. Lost a quarter point on the first trade, and uh, so net three uh, after two trades, quite happy with that. And uh, probably deep pullback to end of trend on this 500 tip bar chart, but this was pretty extreme up here, so uh, I might just leave it at that. We just sped up to 51s, so uh, the original target at 50 and a quarter would have been good. But, you know, I'm always kind of uh, jumping out a little bit too early, but these are pretty extreme readings on better momentum here, 38,000. Yeah, you know, we've had these two exhaustion uh, buying signals up at 16,000. Big, big readings. A lot of people, you know, kind of reversing, having to reverse and, uh, you know, get long. And we're going to make pullback to end a trend on the 500 tip bar chart. So maybe this has got a little bit of a ways to, to run still. So we finally got the end of trend signal on the 500 tip bar chart. And the exit would have been around uh, 51 even, which is a point and a half more than what I got out at. Uh, and easily made the, the original target at 15 quarter. So, you know, it does uh, does pay to uh, hold to the end of the move. And so, pull back to end of trend. You got Rambo patterns up here. You got bearish divergence coming on the 1500 tip bar chart, and blue professional bars. It's kind of on the, on the um, 
a little bit of a retrace here on the 4500 tip by chance so we could still go f further but definitely kind of we're exhausted in terms of buying activity for the time being so uh, let's see where it goes but I'm, I'm done for the day but uh, just interesting how this move kind of ended up hope you're trading well today